Hi, I'm Megan Brown, teacher and EdTech enthusiast. Thanks for joining me on this journey to learn and share meaningful ways to integrate technology into everyday lessons. So, you want to teach with technology? Let's get started. Hello, fellow educators. Welcome to today's episode, 50 Ways to Use Jamboard. It is so good to be back for season two of So You Want to Teach with Technology. This season, there is a lot of new content in store for you guys. There's also going to be a couple episodes where we revisit episodes from last season and go into more detail. So I am so excited to jump into our episode on Jamboard, but I have one announcement before we do so. I ordered some stickers that you can use on your computers or other materials, and I'm going to be doing a little giveaway. So if you would like to receive a free sticker, all you have to do is one of two things. First, you can tag my page on any social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. So just tag the page and tell me something that you have learned or enjoyed about the podcast so far. You can also leave me a review, screenshot your review, and send it to my email, the number two, teachwithtech at gmail.com. That way I'm able to contact you if you are one of the winners. So I will be doing 10 giveaways of those stickers. Um, I love mine. You can see pictures of what they look like on my social media as well. So with that taken care of, let's go ahead and get started on 50 ways to use Jamboard. In case you're not sure what Jamboard is, Jamboard is a feature on Google that is essentially an interactive whiteboard. So you're able to change the backgrounds, you can add pictures, text, sticky notes, you can have a laser pointer. So it's a really great tool, especially for online teachers. So many people have been sharing how they use Jamboard in their classrooms, and so I started taking note of what others were saying, and I came up with some of my own ideas to meet the needs of my students. I tried to come up with as many ideas as I could, but this is definitely not everything. I did my best to go through a variety of examples that cover an array of uses, so hopefully there'll be a few ideas that can help you in your own classroom. So I came up with ideas to use Jamboard for icebreakers, to help with mental health, collaboration, teaching strategies, taking notes, content specific lessons, formative assessments, and games. One of my favorite ways that I've been using Jamboard in my own classroom is with icebreakers. These icebreakers can be used at the beginning of lessons or morning meetings to get students comfortable with each other and set a fun and collaborative tone for the meeting. So I have a few different ideas of icebreakers that you can do. First, you can have this or that. Essentially, you'll split your screen into two different categories. You'll say a question and students have to pick this or that. They have to pick which option they would prefer. You can do the same thing with agree or disagree. So give statements that students have to either agree or disagree with, and they can drag their name to the side of the screen for agree or disagree. You can also do this with would you rather. So this would require a little bit of setup. You would have to have the two different options already laid out on the screen, and then you can have students pick which would they rather do, the right side or the left side. Another thing you can do is create Mad Libs. You can add text to the Jamboard and then have blanks in the text where students can enter either text or use sticky notes to add their own words to make the Mad Lib. Last but not least, this is probably my favorite icebreaker to use is four corners. So I'll have A, B, C, and D corners and I'll give a question and students have to drag their name to which option they agree with. So this is very similar to like the four corners that you would play in the classroom. It's just a digital version. So an example that I did was I had a Jamboard with four different seasons and I asked students, which is your favorite season? You could also do things like what's your Hogwarts house, anything that you could do four corners with in the classroom. 
Next, Jamboard is a great tool to do mental health check-ins with your students. There's lots of different strategies that I've seen people use. One strategy is when students add a sticky note, they can actually change the color of the sticky note. So you could have students change the sticky note color with their name on it to whatever mood they're feeling that day. Another thing you could do is split up the Jamboard into one through five or have different columns with different emojis and have students drag their names to whichever emoji they're feeling or how they're doing on a scale of one to five. Another option to help make students or staff feel really great is to have an open Jamboard where you can have staff or student shout outs. Jamboards will save in everyone's Google Drive so you can easily open the same Jamboard multiple times. So you could have one Jamboard for student or staff shout outs and you could make a new page for every month. So throughout the month, you can add something really great that you see your students doing, or if you're an administrator, you can do the same thing for your staff. Another option to help with mental health is to have students create resolution boards or write down their goals for the year. It's a really great tool to add pictures, add text, and keep checking in on how you're doing towards meeting those resolutions or goals. Jamboard really is such an easy tool to check in with students on their mental health. It is one of my favorite ways that I've used Jamboard this year as a virtual teacher. The next way you can use Jamboard is as a collaboration tool. One thing I've noticed from teaching online for essentially a year now is it's really challenging to get students to have meaningful conversations with each other when they're doing this virtually. So Jamboard is a great way to provide a collaboration space when you're having meetings with students. I know I've done this where I'll have a question and I'll just have students in the meeting add a sticky note or add text to answer the question. Students aren't always willing to turn on their microphones and say their ideas. And I know at least my students feel comfortable using the chat feature, but one downside with the chat feature in Google Meets is that the information is so disorganized and it's really hard to follow. So Jamboard makes it really easy to organize information and make sure that you actually see every student's idea. Another way to use it for collaboration is to check in on how groups are doing during breakout rooms. So I've done this in two ways. Sometimes I'll have a Jamboard that just is one screen and I'll have each group name at the bottom and they'll move their group name sticky note to one of three columns. You can have a I'm doing great column, you can have a I need some help whenever you're ready column, or you can have a I need help right now column. And that way you can see right away if students move their sticky note to I need help right away, you know to go straight to that breakout room and see what they need. Another option is to make different slides on the Jamboard go with different breakout rooms. I've done this a lot where I have students answer specific questions. So each group is assigned specific questions that they have to answer. And so as they're working, I can click through the slides and see what groups are making progress and what groups are not so I know which groups to check in on. Jamboard really has been a lifesaver when it comes to getting students to collaborate online. I cannot imagine being as effective of a teacher without this tool this year. In addition to a collaboration tool, Jamboard can be used with many of the teaching strategies that we're used to using in the classroom. The first strategy is to use Jamboard as a discussion board during online lessons or presentations. I know I talked about this a little bit earlier as well, but Jamboard really allows a safe space for students to write down their ideas, either using the sticky note feature or the text feature, and then students can even respond to each other and use this as a discussion board as well. The next option is to use Jamboard as a carousel tool. I know right now a lot of people, even in the the classroom are trying to maintain social distancing, so doing a 
regular carousel might not be possible in your classroom. So you can add multiple sheets on Jamboard and click through them to either showcase student work or present materials in the form of a carousel. Next, Jamboard is a great option for matching games. I would pick Jamboard for matching over other tools simply because of how easy it is to manipulate and move materials around on Jamboard. They're never going to get stuck in a certain position like on Google Documents and it's really easy to just move them wherever you would like. So any kind of matching game that you use in the classroom, you would be able to recreate using Jamboard. You can add pictures, you can add text boxes, you can add different shapes. So really, you can create any kind of matching game you would like. Next, Jamboard is just a great tool to use as a whiteboard. If you're teaching an online class, you can make your class look exactly like it would in the classroom by using Jamboard to write just like you would on a whiteboard. You can use it to solve math problems, fill in data tables, however you would typically use your whiteboard or your smart board in your classroom. Next, a popular activity especially elementary school teachers use are creating anchor charts. So you can create online anchor charts using Jamboard. It's really easy to change the color, change the size of text, and you can even export these as PDFs or as pictures so that you can post them in other places. If you have a learning management system or Class Dojo, you can showcase what you have on your anchor chart so that it's easily accessible to students. Another option for Jamboard is to create a learning menu. I know Google Docs is an awesome tool to create learning menus, but Jamboard is a little bit more user friendly in terms of students being able to interact with it. So students can more easily circle their options or check off or color in what options they pick. Those features aren't quite as user friendly on Google Documents. One of my favorite activities that I did in the classroom while teaching math was doing notice and wonders at the beginning of word problems or beginning of challenging problems to get students thinking about what was being asked. So you can use Jamboard to create two columns, one for notice, one for wonder, and have students fill in, similar to a discussion board, questions they have and what they notice about what you're doing. So this can be used in any content area. So the goal here is to get students thinking deeply about those challenging concepts before you dive into them. The last strategy I have is to plan or brainstorm your writing. Now this can be used in any content area. You can set up different columns with probing questions that you want students to plan for. So if students are writing a narrative, they can brainstorm what happens. Where does it happen? When did it happen? If students have to write an informative or a persuasive piece of writing, you can have them brainstorm their thesis and supporting evidence. When I taught science, students would still write essays and we would have them state their case, list their reasoning, and their textual evidence. So this would be a really great way to have students brainstorm different reasonings and evidence from the text that they're gonna use throughout their writing. So there are so many teaching strategies that we use and are used to that can be recreated using online tools or just for an online classroom using Jamboard. The next topic we're gonna look at is how students can take notes using Jamboard as well. Now this is a great option because taking notes online is going to make sure that students don't lose any of their notes. And I know a lot of times when students are taking online classes, they might not think to purchase tangible materials for note taking because everything they're doing is online. So it's a really great option so that students can continue to take notes because that's a really great way for students to remember and to learn information, but we're doing it all online. My favorite option is to use Jamboard just as a graphic organizer. So you can have students create concept webs by inserting shapes in the Jamboard and adding text into the shapes. It's also really easy to either draw lines or add lines to show all the connections between concepts. 
Another great graphic organizer is cause and effect. So you can have students fill in the cause column and then brainstorm different effects that that cause will have. And the same thing with problem and solution. I've also had students create a Venn diagram so that we can compare and contrast different topics as well. And it is so easy to insert sticky notes or to add text to those graphic organizers. So it's very easy to organize your information. And if you decide that you want to change something, you can easily just move it to the other section if you realize maybe instead of on one side, it should have been in the middle. So it's a lot more user-friendly even than just writing it on a piece of paper. Something else that you can do with notes on Jamboard is to use sketch notes. And if you haven't heard of sketch notes, I highly recommend um, doing research on this note-taking technique because it is so interesting and that is its own podcast diving into all of um, the options that you can do with sketch notes. But basically, sketch notes are a way for students to integrate their creativity with note taking. So they're not only taking notes, but they're drawing pictures and making those connections during a lesson. So you could be giving a presentation and you could have students create sketch notes on Jamboard. And just like I mentioned earlier, they can actually export those as PDFs and submit it to you as an assignment. So there are so many note-taking strategies that you can use with Jamboard. So now we're gonna look at some content-specific activities that you can use Jamboard for. So starting with math, one of the awesome features about Jamboard is that you can actually insert different backgrounds. So you can insert a background of the coordinate plane on the Jamboard and have students practice plotting points on a graph. You can also do something similar with plotting numbers on a number line. You can have students add sticky notes or add text to where the number should be on a number line. Another option is to play the game 24. So if you've never played this, you can get cards that have four numbers on it and students need to brainstorm ways to create the number 24 by using any of the four operations. So they can only use those four numbers and no others. You can either add your own numbers or you can insert pictures of the actual 24 card and have students write as many ways as they can think of to create 24. You can also use this for differentiation by adding multiple slides with different levels of 24 cards. Another way you can use Jamboard in the math classroom is to just use it like a whiteboard and show how you can complete math problems. You can also have students solve problems and give them immediate feedback as they go. This could be done in a whole class, or if you're just working one-on-one -on -one with a student, you can pull up a Jamboard and have them show you exactly how they think they would solve the problem. That way you can see exactly what they're doing and pinpoint any mistakes that they're making in real time. And lastly for math, and this is probably my favorite, you can use Jamboard to replicate manipulatives. And this is such a great option because it's so easy to move what's on the Jamboard around. You can rotate it. So manipulatives are a great way to use Jamboard. All you would have to do is insert a picture of whatever manipulative you're using. And this is gonna take a little bit of time to make sure that everything is sized proportionally but in the end, you can keep reusing this for as long as you need. You can add base 10 blocks, pattern blocks, algebra tiles, cuisinaire rods, fraction strips, really any manipulative that you would use in your classroom. And if your district has low funding to where you can't purchase a class set of manipulatives, this would be a great alternative. It's not quite the same as physically moving things around and touching them and feeling them, but it's a really great alternative if that's not going to be an option for you. Next, for language arts, you can use Jamboards to create a book tasting. So you can have a slide for each book that you want students to see and add text, add pictures, add links to videos so that they can scroll through and get a little bit of an understanding of all their book options. Next, if you work in an elementary school and you're working on sight words, you can also add text boxes with individual letters so students can practice creating sight words. 
and changing those letters around to create other sight words. So you could have something like dog, log, hog to where they're changing out that first letter and practicing creating new words. Finally, Jamboard is a great tool to use for storyboarding or outlining either essays or if you're doing a video presentation as well, it's a great tool to brainstorm and outline those presentations. In social studies, you can use Jamboard to practice annotating maps. It's really easy to insert a background, so you can really take any picture and make it the background of the Jamboard, and students can practice locating different countries. You can also use it to showcase when you're starting a new topic, where in the world you're looking, and you can even use it to practice latitude and longitude. I know that's a standard I've been working on with my students, and Jamboard was a really great tool in helping students practice um, finding different areas of latitude and longitude. And lastly, for social studies, you can also use Jamboard to create timelines. So you could use this as an assignment for students. You can give them a blank timeline and have them insert sticky notes or text with important events that are happening on different dates. They can even export this as a PDF or a picture and then turn it into you on either Google Classroom or whatever learning management system you're using. And finally, for science, Jamboard is a great way for students to share observations that they have to different labs. You can be doing a lab together over Google Meet, you could have students watch videos of labs, or you can have them do an online lab and use Jamboard as a way to kind of collect all of these different observations. In addition, I know we talked about graphing in math and plotting those points, but you can have students graph the results they find on Jamboard as well and really easily go through different groups and share their results. So there are so many content specific ways that you can use Jamboard in your own classroom. And a lot of these options just make an online classroom feel a little bit more personable, a little bit more like what students are used to when we're in the actual buildings. Jamboard is a great teaching tool, but it can also be a quick way to assess student understanding either at the end of a lesson or as an asynchronous option as well. I saw one teacher create a Jamboard that had a weekly wrap up where each student would add a light bulb moment that they had, a high point of the week, um, and a low point of the week all by just adding sticky notes to their own slide. That way it would be really quick and easy for the teacher to go through each student and check in on how their week went. Next, you can also have students do a fist to five on their understanding. So you can add an emoji of a fist, the number one, two, three, four, and five, and have students move a sticky note with their name to where they are in their understanding after a lesson. I've also had a teacher use this after doing a read aloud, they'll do a fist to five on how they enjoyed the book. Similarly, you could have students move their name to a thumbs up or a thumbs down after a lesson to just quickly see did they get it or not to determine their confidence in the new material. You can also use Jamboard at the end of a lesson by quickly just having students write one thing they learned. I know I've done this with actual sticky notes in my classroom and I don't think I'm ever gonna do that again. I think I'll probably just use Jamboard from now on when doing that activity. And finally, you can also use Jamboard as an entrance or an exit ticket. I know I use a lot of Google Forms as entrance and exit tickets because it's a really easy way to get quick feedback on student understanding, but the one downside to that, especially in math, is that you can't see how students found their answer. So if you have students answer questions on Jamboard, they can actually write out step-by-step -step what they did to get their final answer. So no matter your favorite way of using formative assessment in the classroom, Jamboard is a great tool to embody those assessments in an online environment. So the final section I want to go over is games. It is really important as online teachers that we're using these tools to provide quality instruction to our students. But that's not all education is about. It's also important that students are still getting to know each other, still able to play and have fun. And so Jamboards are a really easy tool to allow students to play games with each other as well. 
There are a few specific games that would be really easily incorporated with Jamboard. First, you can add mazes. So if you have a picture of a maze, you can add that as a background, and then students can use the drawing tool to make their way through the maze. You can also create Ken Kens. So it would be the same thing. You would take a picture of the Ken Ken and make it the background, and then students can use either the drawing feature or they can use text to fill in the blanks on the Ken Ken. Next, Sudoku is very similar to Ken Ken, set up a little bit differently, but it's the same thing where students would fill in the blanks with those numbers. Next is Battleship. You can actually go online and download Battleship outlines and use this, or you can create your own as well. Each student would just need to be on their own sheet in the Jamboard, and they would ask each other questions and fill in if everything is a hit or a miss. Next, one of my favorites is you can use Jamboard to play Pictionary. I've done this in a group of about 100 students and it was so much fun. So you would share the Jamboard with every participant and then you would take turns having students draw and then you can use the chat feature in a meeting for students to guess what's being drawn. Whoever guesses correctly will be the next person to draw. My students had so much fun playing Pictionary. And then another option is Tangram. So you would create this similarly to how you would create if you're doing online manipulatives. You would just add pictures of each Tangram piece and that way students can move them around, they can rotate them in order to fit into different shapes. So you would add those shapes as the background on the Jamboard. This is such a fun game to play with students um, and a really great way to work on spatial reasoning as well. It's also a great idea to just have some games ready to go on Jamboard. If you have extra time in a meeting or you want to start off with something fun, you can pull these games really quickly for students to play. Thank you all so much for listening. Please share how you're using Jamboard with the To Teach With Tech community on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and now TikTok. Our username is the number two, Teach With Tech. I cannot wait to see all the creative ways that you guys are using Jamboard in your lessons, both in person and online. Next week, we're going to look at Google Classroom and some really fun tips and tricks that you can use. If you have anything specific you want addressed or you want to share your strategies, please email me at the number two, teachwithtech at gmail.com. Please make sure to tell your friends and colleagues if you are loving this podcast, and a review would be extremely helpful in getting the word out. Also, remember that if you screenshot your review and you send it to me at my email, or if you tag the podcast on your social media, you will be entered to win a free So You Want to Teach with Technology sticker. I will be handing out 10 stickers at the end of this month, so at the end of March. I cannot wait to chat with you next time, but until then, just keep teaching with technology.